Hello everyone, it's great to see you again. Today, I want to share with you my tips and recipes for hosting an early summer dinner party. I am serving a refreshing cucumber and mint soup for the first course, a sumptuous skillet of filet mignon tips and mushrooms for the second course, and crisp meringue cups filled with store-bought lemon curd and berries for the grand finale. This is a stress-free menu for the cook who also happens to wear the hats of host and butler. All of the dishes can be made ahead of time. Let me put on my apron and then we can get cracking in the kitchen. We're going to start with the meringue cups. So my oven is preheated to 225 degrees Fahrenheit or 107 degrees Celsius. Then I'm going to separate six large eggs. So I'm putting the white in this little bowl and the yolk in another bowl. And then I'm transferring the white to the bowl of my stand mixer. You could use any large bowl and handheld electric beaters. Now the reason I'm separating the eggs this way is because I do not want any of the yolk to get mixed in with the whites. So if a yolk happens to break, well, I can catch it in this little bowl here. I'm going to freeze the yolks. I'm going to beat the whites at medium speed just until they begin to foam. The whites are foamy, so now I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. This is just to stabilize the whites. Then I'm going to start beating again, and I will gradually add one and a half cups or 300 grams of regular granulated sugar. We're simply making meringue here. And I'm going to beat the whites at high speed until they form stiff peaks. Let's have a look. Stiff peaks. I'm going to transfer all of this meringue to a pastry bag and I have outfitted the bag with a tip. You could use a star tip or just a wide tip. I like to put the bag in a tall vase so that it's easier to fill. I could eat this meringue just as it is. I need to pipe this into rounds, so what I've done is taken a sheet of parchment paper and I've drawn three inch diameter circles on it and then I'm going to flip the paper over so the meringue doesn't come in contact with the pencil mark. Then I'm going to pipe out little cups. I'm going to pop these little cups into the oven until they are very dry. That's going to take from 45 minutes to one hour. After the cups have baked, leave them in the turned off oven for a full hour. While the meringues are baking, I'm going to go ahead and make the soup. This is a cold and refreshing cucumber soup. Nothing could be easier to make. So I have a couple of English cucumbers here. Lop off the ends. 
I already lopped that end off. Oops, <laughs> I'm putting them in my mint. I like to remove the seeds, so I cut the cucumber in half, and then I cut it lengthwise in half, and then I need a spoon. The seeds can be bitter, that's why I remove them. You just take a spoon and scrape. The seeds come right out. I like using English cucumbers because they are far less bitter than regular garden variety cucumbers. You'll be glad to know that this soup requires no cooking whatsoever. Roughly cut the cucumbers into half moons. The other good thing about English cucumbers is that you do not have to peel them. Transfer the cucumber pieces to a blender. I'm using my Vitamix blender, but this recipe should work with any powerful blender. Now I'm adding the zest and juice of two limes. You could use lemon here. I love the scent of lime. This is a microplane zester. It works great because it only removes the fragrant peel and none of the pith. I will link this in the description below if you are interested. Here comes the juice. For a bit of tang, I'm adding some Greek yogurt, full fat. There are no exact proportions to this recipe. I'm also going to add a handful of fresh mint leaves. Then I need a half teaspoon of salt and a few grinds of black pepper. For just a hint of sweetness, I'm adding some local honey. About a teaspoon. Pop the lid on. Blend to a smooth puree. I will link this recipe in the description below. Let's have a taste. Oh, this is gorgeous. I'm going to transfer this to a pitcher. Now, if the soup is too thick for your liking, you can always thin it out with some heavy cream or even just water. I'm going to cover this and then pop it into the refrigerator. And tomorrow, when we have the dinner party, I'm going to determine whether I want to thin this out at all. I'm going to serve this in probably small cups, so this will certainly be enough for at least four servings. The meringue cups are all baked and they do look beautiful. I'm going to let these cool to room temperature and then I will put them in an airtight container. And then tomorrow, shortly before the dinner party, I'm going to fill them. Also tomorrow, I'm going to do a flower arrangement and set the table. So I will see you tomorrow. Hello friend. It's the next morning and I am getting ready to head off to the local supermarket in search of inexpensive flowers for the dining table. And I have to warn you, the air quality here is just terrible. I'll explain why during our drive. Off we go. Here in New York's Hudson Valley, the sky is filled with smoke. The smoke is from wildfires that are currently raging in Nova Scotia. My heart goes out to the people, pets, and wildlife affected by the fires. I hope that relief comes soon.
We are home. Here are the flowers. I'm going to make the arrangement in this antique pedestal bowl. I have some hosta from my garden. I'm giving this arrangement an Elizabethan collar. I'm using floral foam that I soaked overnight. Please remember that I am not a professional flower arranger. Far from it. with only some free hosta leaves and some inexpensive supermarket flowers. I think this arrangement came out very well. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For this party, I've decided to use my white and gold chargers and my signature blue and white dinner plates. Water pitchers, wine coasters, and wine. I am serving white wine with the first course soup and red wine with the main course steak. As a side dish for the main course, I'm going to roast some baby potatoes. These are the potatoes that we purchased at Hawthorne Valley Farm a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't watched that video, I hope you will do so. It was a fun trip. I'm just cutting the potatoes in half. Olive oil. Salt and pepper. The olive oil will help the potatoes to brown in the oven. Speaking of which, you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. And then pop these into the oven about 30 minutes before you wish to serve your main course, which I'm going to make very shortly. I just pour the potatoes onto a baking sheet, spread them about, and if you're not ready to bake them just yet, just pop them into the refrigerator. On to the main course 
It's a skillet steak dinner. I'm going to use filet mignon tips, one pound. You should be able to buy these in any supermarket and you want to dry them really well. Generously season the filet tips with salt and pepper. Filet tips are always tender. The trick is to not overcook them. Here's the pepper. Then I need one bunch of green onions, which where I live are called scallions. Trim off the root. Then I'm going to thinly slice the scallions or green onions. I will link this recipe in the description below. Besides the green onions, I also need a half to one pound of sliced mushrooms. My supermarket had these mushrooms already sliced. Very convenient. We'll also need some fresh tarragon. We're going to move to the stovetop now. I'm going to use my cast iron skillet for this dish. When the skillet is hot, add a glug of oil. I'm using light olive oil because it has a higher smoking point than extra virgin olive oil. And we're going to brown the meat on both sides. This should only take two minutes. When the meat is nicely browned, which again should not take more than two minutes, transfer it to a plate and keep it warm. In the same skillet, melt two tablespoons of butter. When the butter melts, add the sliced mushrooms and saute the mushrooms until they soften and color lightly. That's going to take about four minutes. When the mushrooms are nicely browned, add two to three tablespoons of dry vermouth or any dry white wine. As the wine boils, use a spatula to scrape up any of the stuck on bits from the bottom of the pan. Those bits are loaded with flavor. This is called deglazing the pan. Then stir in the scallions and about two tablespoons of Worcester sauce. Also stir in one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I've read that this was Princess Diana's favorite mustard. Give that a stir. Oh, this smells wonderful already. Then toss in a handful of the tarragon leaves. If you think it needs it, add another pinch of salt and some grinds of black pepper. Then turn off the heat and immediately add the beef to the skillet. Remember, this is filet mignon. You do not want to overcook it. I'm going to transfer this to a 200 degree Fahrenheit oven just to keep it warm until dinner time. My guests are arriving shortly. So I've looked at the soup that we made yesterday. It's been in the refrigerator overnight. It's very thick now, so I am going to thin it out with a little half and half. You could use heavy cream here or even water. I like to plate the soup in the kitchen. This way I can garnish it before bringing it to table. I am garnishing the soup with small basil leaves. You might prefer to use mint leaves here. To accompany the cucumber soup, I'm serving slices of baguette. Now that the soup course has been served and the soup cups have been cleared, I am bringing the main course and the potatoes to table. And here's the beef that I kept warm in the 
200 degree Fahrenheit oven. And I'm just going to garnish this and then I will let guests serve themselves directly from the skillet. In other words, I will put the skillet on my sideboard. I'm going to garnish it with scallion. And just to make it look pretty, I'm going to add some sprigs of tarragon. I love the layers of flavor in this dish. In particular, the Worcester sauce and the tarragon and everything else we put in this. And of course, the mushrooms are fabulous too. On to dessert. For the crispy meringue cups, I am cheating big time by using store-bought lemon curd. To cut the sweetness of the curd, I am adding a pinch of salt. And to enhance the hue, I am adding a tiny amount of food coloring. Fresh blueberries and blackberries complete the picture. This is such a chic little dessert and so easy to make. You hear that? That is the crispy meringue shell. Just remember that after you bake the meringue, leave it in the oven with the oven turned off for a full hour. This is melt in your mouth delicious. I mean, the meringue literally just melts on your tongue. And the store-bought lemon curd is not bad at all. I'm not at all embarrassed to be using it. That little bit of salt really offsets the sweetness of the store-bought lemon curd. I think I could live on this dessert. Well, I hope you will give this easy, early summer, make-ahead dinner a try someday. As you've just seen, all of the dishes are really easy to do, and they are truly delicious. If you'd like to see more dinner menus from me, be sure to subscribe and to tap the little bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me for dinner, and I will see you in next week's video. I'm going to finish this dessert. Mm -hmm.